part of this video is an extract from the movie Modern Day Mystics Episode 1. Links are in the description box. St. Vincent Ferrer of Valencia, Spain, in my estimation, is one of the most remarkable saints outside of the Apostles. It has been written that he was one of the greatest saints in the history of the church and yet his existence has been mostly forgotten. His ministry was so marked by the miraculous, it was considered a miracle not to see a miracle in his presence. Through St. Vincent's life, the Lord worked so many signs and wonders that it was a challenge to document them all. The church officially recognized 892 of his miracles as part of his canonization, but the total number is estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands. And these miracles began even before he was born. His father, William, had a dream where he walked into a church and a man on a pulpit prophesied to him. I felicitate you, William. In a few days you will have a son who will become a prodigy of learning and sanctity. The world will resound with the fame of his wondrous deeds. He will put on the habit which I wear and will be received in the church with universal joy as one of its first apostles. When St. Vincent's mother was pregnant with him, she had an unusually comfortable, graceful pregnancy. During her pregnancy, she went to give her monthly alms to a blind woman. After asking the blind woman to pray for a safe childbirth, the blind woman bent her head over onto the mother's bosom and said, May God bestow that favor on you. At that instant, the blind woman could suddenly see. And St. Vincent became famous even before he was born. When he was only six years old, he was taken to a child of the same age who had a dangerous postule on his neck. He was asked to touch the affected part, but instead Vincent kissed it. The moment his lips touched the flesh, it was instantly cured. The wound had disappeared. And then when Vincent was nine years old, he went to the home of one of his classmates to fetch him for school. Hearing the mother weeping, he hastily ascended the stairs of the house and found the mother who cried out sobbing, my son is dead. Vincent smiled and said to the mother, Let us go. My friend is not dead. He's sleeping. Let us go to see him. Vincent approached the bed and taking the cold and rigid corpse by the hand exclaimed, Get up. It's time to go to school. The nine-year-old boy opened his eyes as if he had been in a deep sleep. The boy dressed himself and they both headed off to school as if nothing had occurred. Supernatural activity abound through Vincent's life from childhood into adulthood. And this activity was so various. It ranged from resurrection, healings, multiplication, miracles, and so on. Near the town of Conflans during August 1415, he fed 4,000 men, not counting women and children, with just seven loaves and a few fishes. And then, near Palma of Mallorca, St. Vincent Ferrer stilled a storm in order to preach from a wharf. At Beziers, he stopped a flood. He would cast out demons with a word or a touch, and he also had the gift of language. His words 
would supernaturally translate to a different language so they could be understood by any listeners. Others would hear him in their own language, though he spoke in his native Spanish dialect, and his voice would carry over large distances to be heard by cr crowds of up to 50,000. They all wanted to hear him speak because his speech was so anointed. His preaching was said to be a miracle in itself, pure genius that would enrapture its hearers. A great entourage of up to 10,000 people would follow him on his apostolic journeys. They would pay their own expenses to travel wherever he went. It is written that when St. Vincent Ferrer would enter a town, the entire town would come to Christ. It was like Jonah preaching to Nineveh. Tears, sighs, lamentations would fill the air. They would never be the same again. And by the time he left the town, Violence and crimes would cease, enemies would be reconciled, and peace would return. St. Vincent also had a special gifting and eagerness to preach to Jews and Muslims and those who were hostile to the gospel. Stories relate how he entered a Jewish synagogue and converted every single person to Christ. He was introduced into a synagogue in Salamanca by a Jew whom he had befriended for this purpose. He entered the synagogue with a crucifix in his hand, which caused dismay among the assembly. But he calmed them down, saying he had come to speak to them on a matter of utmost importance. The Jews imagined that he was to speak about a matter of public interest, and so they listened to him with great attention. He then, in soft and gentle words, began to speak to them of the Christian faith. While preaching, there appeared a shower of snow-white crucifixes which settled on the clothing of everyone assembled. The crosses appeared outside the garments, but then penetrated invisibly into their hearts. Moved by divine grace, they all became Christians and were baptized by Vincent. The synagogue was consecrated by St. Vincent into a church and named the True Cross. It was documented that in the year 1412, a friar named Brother Vincent, having preached to the Jews, the latter renounced their law up to a number of 200,000. In other words, Brother Vincent successfully led up to 200,000 Jews to the Lord Jesus Christ. Vincent also possessed gifts to a rare degree, bringing healing wherever he went. He raised over 30 people from the dead. He was also extremely motivated and was able to travel at a very quick pace over vast distances with such zeal and an enthusiasm to share the good news of the gospel. Witnesses proclaimed that in the middle of his preaching, he would assume wings and he would fly off to help a suffering person and then return in the same manner and continue preaching. An arresting miracle that he is known for is the story of the mother who chopped and cooked her own baby. 
Her husband was wild with grief, looking upon the bloody remains of his child. And Saint Vincent arrived. Consoling the husband, he gathered the parts of the child with his own hands, kneeling down, making the sign of the cross. He prayed, May Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, the Lord and Savior of the world, who drew the soul of this child from nothingness, restore it once again to its body, to the praise and glory of His great majesty to the witness of the parents and the neighbors who had come to the house in hearing the cries of the husband, the parts of the child rejoined together and the child was completely restored to life with no indications of this great tragedy. Saint Vincent's life abound with the supernatural but he preached a somber message of repentance and conversion. Even in his time, he was grieved by the corruption in the world. Saint Ferreira said, No, I do not believe that there ever existed in the world so much pomp and vanity, so much impurity as at the present day to find in the world's history an epoch so criminal, we must go back to the days of Noah and the universal flood. This quote from St. Vincent Ferrer sounds just as applicable today, if not more so. I leave you with some words from St. Ferrer that reveal his selfless mindset and approach to ministry. He writes, if you truly want to help the soul of your neighbor, you should approach God first with all your heart. Ask him simply to fill you with charity, the greatest of all virtues. With it, you can accomplish what you desire. Whatever you do, think not of yourself, but of God.